Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to our first live event, introducing the newest addition to our MOOC offering at MIT CTL, Advanced Supply Chain System Planning and Network Design. I am Dr. Eva Ponce. I'm the Director of Online Education here at MIT, the Center for Transportation and Logistics. And today we will provide an overview of this new massive open online course, which is part of the online learning ecosystem that we are offering here at MIT, the Center for Transportation and Logistics. I will start by introducing you the, to the main instructor for this course. We will also share context on our course content and some details about the course uh, run, about how you can earn a certificate, and how you can learn through this new MOOC. We will also be including time for you to bring your questions. As we know, you may have many questions since this is the first course run that we are offering in this topic. So be sure to share your questions in the Q&A feature throughout the webinar. And we will be attentive to bring your questions to the webinar, okay? Okay, so to get started, we want to know more about you and your experience with CTL online education, or maybe this is your first time engaging with our offering, which we are very excited to have you join our community. So please take a few seconds to answer our first poll. The first poll, Paul is now live. Um, we would love to, to hear from you about how you have engaged with MIT CTL online education offerings. Maybe you have taken some of our MicroMasters in Supply Chain Management uh, program courses. Maybe you have taken some of our MOOCs, already existing MOOCs like Sustainability or Humanitarian Logistics. Or maybe you have taken both MicroMaster courses and our uh, existing MOOCs or maybe this is your first time engaging with our online offering at CTL. So let us know, let us know where you are. Um, with that, we are going to move forward, providing you more details about this exciting course. Okay, so I can see here that about 60% of you already took MicroMasters in Supply Chain Management courses, which is great. Uh, um, 30% is the very first time engaging with our MIT online educational offering. That's great to hear, definitely. Um, and this is great to hear because for the MicroMasters in Supply Chain Management uh, learners, the MicroMaster has already provided many of you with a solid foundation in understanding and addressing, I would say, key supply chain challenges and trade-offs in supply chain along with essential techniques and tools for managing supply chains in an effective way. For those of you who have already completed courses like Supply Chain Design, SC2X, this new MOOC offers a valuable next step because this new MOOC will allow you to dive deeper into advanced topics such as network design and supply chain systems planning. So it's a great kind of next step for those of you that already completed SE2X or any other course as part of the MicroMaster. Um, if you are new to our courses, welcome. This MOOC has been designed as a standalone course, also as an accessible uh, MOOC. So whether you are continuing your learning journey with us or you are starting fresh with us, I, I'm sure you will find this MOOC very rewarding. I'm also thrilled to share with you that the MicroMaster program has a welcome over 1 million enrollments with more than 60,000 of our learners earning certificates. So I want to bring that, that because by joining this course, you also will be part of a passionate community of supply chain management learners and we are confident you will find this experience both enriching and enjoyable, hopefully. <laughs> um, with that, um, I want uh, to move now to, uh, to the course team, and I want to introduce you Dr. Milena Janjevic. Milena is a research scientist at the MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics, 
Um, she is leading the MIT Supply Chain Design Lab here at, uh, at the center. Milena and Dr. Matthias Wickenbach both have created a course for our residential MIT students, for our master's students in supply chain management. The course uh, is the same course, it's advanced supply chain systems planning and network design. And now they have turned this residential course into a online, massive open online course into a MOOC. Um, this is, a, they are following the same patterns as our previous MOOC here at the center that we typically offer the MOOC as a residential course and then we turn it into a massive uh, offer, online offering for our uh, learners worldwide. So these MOOCs are equivalent to MIT grad level content. This is important to highlight. Um, Milena, we are so excited for the course and would love to learn directly from you about the value of taking this MOOC. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Eva. I'm very excited to be here and to connect with the learners and potential learners. Uh, Matthias and I are very excited to um, bring this new course. Um, we had um, really great feedback from our residential students on this course, and uh, we are really excited to open it up to uh, a much broader audience. And um, I'll be happy to to uh, talk about the content and also answer any questions uh, you might have uh, about this, uh, this course. Um, so um, maybe before we start, uh, let's do a, a short poll. Uh, we would lo love to know specifically um, what motivates you for taking this course. Uh, so uh, we already have this information from several people that are involved, but I really want to know what are some of the key motivations for you? Is it to enhance your career, promote your learning? Um, how much is the um, formal certification that you can obtain a, a driver here? Uh, and so we'll, we'll give you a few minutes to, uh, to open this, uh, to answer to this poll. I see a lot of a lot of people that are that are pretty motivated. Uh, a lot of them are 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 saying that they have a pa passion for continuous learning and personal growth. And I think this is definitely one of the main motivators that we see with our learners. And we are really excited to pro provide these opportunities and um, to be part of the entire offering that CTL has. So we have all these different uh, courses that are part of MicroMasters, and over the the time we're trying to essentially enable. Um, people to advance uh, in these specialized MOOCs and as essentially have a, a much more uh, targeted knowledge they can develop uh, all along their career. So we're very excited to, to be able to do that. Um, and I see quite a few people actually mentioning um, that they um, are looking at this as a way to enhance their career prospects and job opportunities. And uh, we're definitely hoping that we can, we can help you in that journey um, by on one hand, uh, giving you a more thorough understanding of some of the supply chain concepts around network design, but also essentially equipping you with tools that you can use in other uh, areas um, in your career as well. Uh, so thank you everyone for uh, for answering this poll. Um, and um, one last thing that we'd like to know from you uh, would be, uh, what are your expectations for this course? So you already had a some short overview of what the contents are. We want to first he hear firsthand from you what are some of the expectations that you may have, and then we can address those as we uh, present the the course further. We see we see quite a quite a quite a few answers here. Um, uh, quite a few people ask actually say gaining or expanding knowledge in supply chain design. And as Eva, as, as you've mentioned, so the uh, the MicroMasters course, courses already offer a supply chain design course. Here we're really building on some of these foundations that were, that were established in the MicroMasters and going deeper. And we are doing that by, on one hand, expanding the type of problems that we can look at, but also providing you essentially analytical tools that allow you to address more complex uh, problems that are closer to uh, world, real world challenges that, that you may face. Um, and uh, I see also quite a few people saying uh, that they are looking to develop their analytical skills and learn Python. Um, that's actually a key component of this course and um, something new that we're bringing with this um, specific course offering. Um, and we, we really believe that by giving you these more um, 
powerful tools that's going to bring you closer to being able to address uh, real world uh, challenges and real world problems uh, that are uh, often not possible to address with some simpler, uh, let's say, spreadsheet tools. Uh, so great. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you all for for uh, answering. Um, we hope we're going to be able to meet your expectations and then you'll enjoy the course. Um, and um, I, uh, I'm here to answer questions you might have, Eva, on, on the content. Sure. So thank you. Thank you, Milena. And thank you, everyone, for sharing your thoughts about your expectations and motivation for this course. So now that we know more about what you expect, um, um, what are your motivations, we will transition into what to expect from this MOOC. So let's go first into the course overview, Milena. So first, who is this course for? Yeah, so the, the course actually targets a, a wide range of audiences. Um, I would say when we look at the um, people who are most interested in taking this course, it's on one hand, the supply chain practitioners, um, entry mid-level uh, often um, that work in different, um, uh, in different uh, supply chain roles. And they would love to learn more about um, analytical tools to essentially progress in their career, make better decisions uh, around supply chain design. Uh, we also have um, quite a few students uh, that are taking the course uh, that essentially see this as an additional step in their academic journey. Um, and um, what we also did is that the, a lot of the concepts from this course are made in such a way that uh, you can actually translate this to a broader audience. So, you know, business man managed professionals that are maybe not directly linked to supply chain. Well, th this this is also something that could be valuable for them to essentially uh, learn about the, the importance of supply chains and connect that with the type of work that they are doing. So quite a broad audience that, that we are targeting with this course. Yeah, and it's great to see that the course is targeting supply chain practitioners and business management professional, as well as students uh, who want to pursue a supply chain management career. So continuing with the course overview, Milena, um, what, that, what does this course cover and what will you learn if you take this MOOC? Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the course has five different modules and essentially... We are starting with the foundational models in supply chain and network design. And so for those of you who have taken uh, the MicroMaster supply chain design course, you actually see that the first part of this course is actually going to be, uh, we're going to be repeating some of the, that content. But the twist that we'll, we'll give here is that we'll actually um, teach you how to use Python and more developed optimization software to, to address these models. And so that kind of serves as a first tradition, uh, transition towards more advanced topics. And as the course progresses, we're essentially trying to make this kind of foundational and simple models around supply chain design more complex and more in line with the real life challenges that you may encounter uh, in practice. And so gradually we are incorporating things like revenue considerations in supply chain design, inventory consideration in the supply chain design. Uh, we are also addressing um, how do you design supply chains when you are facing multiple competing objectives. So let's say, you want to minimize for the cost, but you also want to take into account sustainability. How do you incorporate those trade-offs into your models? And how do you essentially build models that uh, provide you with the best compromise between different um, areas? Um, one thing that the learners will learn and see very quickly when they take this course is that there's not a single way of approaching supply chain design planning and supply chain design because you know every company uh, is different. We we work with a number of comp companies here at CTL uh, with who we collaborate on essentially developing these design models. And depending on the context, depending on the industry, depending on the challenges that they're facing, these models are going to be um, different essentially. And what we want to provide learners essentially is the ability to take a real world situation, uh, analyze the situation, being able to identify what are some of the main challenges and some main issues, translating that into a mathematical model, solve that model and drive recommendations. So really kind of a full loop and a full understanding of what um, the, the most appropriate modelings uh, could be uh, for every specific uh, situation that we're facing. 
Um, so that's that's in terms of content. And I say, as I said, there is um, in the first module, there's, there's going to be um, a slight um, uh, kind of recap of what was done in the C, uh, um, SC2X supply chain design course. Um, we did this so that you can essentially transition more easily towards the more complex models, but also for those learners who we're not able to take uh, SC2X and are engaging with us for the first time. Well, that kind of gives you essentially everything you need to know um, to be able to progress further. And um, it's also meant to be um, taken as a standalone course. So you don't necessarily have to have the uh, MicroMasters uh, um, uh, to, to be able to, to take this course. Perfect. That's great, uh, Milena. Um, and also it's great to see that you are um, uh, targeting complex problems, um, providing advanced model by introducing additional objectives like inventory or sustainability that include more complexity to the models, but also uh, uh, bring this need of advanced techniques in order to solve that. So great yep. to, to see that. And also, um, I think one thing to highlight is you are doing that while also maintaining the hands-off approach we have in the SEX courses, bringing real world examples into the course. And this is something that I saw in the chat, uh, people asking about is, uh, are we going to be exposed to real world examples? So uh, uh, can you elaborate, elaborate a little bit more about this uh, hands-off approach and how you are planning to run the course? Yeah, absolutely. So um, basically, when you think about the, the teaching methods that we have in this course, we, we're doing a few things. So uh, on the one hand, there is, you know, the lectures where we teach people about the mathematical models, then we implement these models in Python. And so that is very much based on the modeling and the implementation. Um, what we're also using in this course um, uh, for the first time is actually um, um, interactive visual applications that essentially translate um, use cases that uh, we as researchers have uh, have worked on with companies and that represent um, essentially larger problems that are um, directly inspired by, by practice. And so essentially, um, you can think about it as um, a series of different simulations that um, the uh, uh, learners can interact with, and we'll ask them to go through these different exercises and essentially that allows you to gain better intuition about what is happening with these models, how that translates into practice, and to 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 work with type of um, of tools and models that are very close to what we would do for um, some of our uh, partner companies, for example. So uh, as I mentioned, this is the first time we're doing this. Um, so far, uh, we have mainly used um, these interactive applications developed by the the, the MIT Cave Lab when we work with um, uh, companies on real life research projects. And so we take those issues and the problems they're facing, we build models, and then we build interactive applications around those models. Um, we are now bringing essentially that um, same type of work to our learners um, in order to enable them to, to interact with the content in a, in a much more deeper uh, deeper manner. And so we're very excited to uh, see what the feedback is from our learners and how they can uh, benefit um, their, their learning. Yeah. And the community, I think they love this hands-off approach and real world examples. So this is great. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of questions also related to the format. So one clarification, this is a massive open online course. This is a MOOC stem from that. Uh, so uh, it's a 100% online course. 100% virtual course, because there are some questions related about that. They are also asking about, okay, which one will be the format of this course? Will it be a self-paced a course or instructor-paced course? How many modules? So can you explain a little bit more about the format and structure for this course, Milena? Sure, sure, sure. So this is an instructor-paced course. Um, we have five different modules and what that means is that every week we will essentially release content uh, that is relevant to a specific module. So that content is going to be, you know, introduction to different concepts, it's going to be the different exercises that you can work on in Python, 
um, it's going to be the different interactive visualizations that you can interact with and also the graded assignments. And then from the moment that the um, content is released, the learners essentially have two weeks to complete uh, that and to essentially um, uh, submit their uh, graded assignments um, if they would like to learn a certificate. And so, you know, it's instructor pace in a sense that we are releasing content every week, but there's still some flexibility around um, when you uh, can uh, take this because you have full two weeks to essentially complete a um, specific module. Yeah. And um, where are we? Have you already released the first week of content? So uh, we have in, indeed released the first week of content. So the um, actually last Wednesday was the, the launch date of our course. Uh, and that first week of content um, was focused on providing an introduction to the course, kind of covering all the key concepts that we'll be seeing and also providing people like a, a small crash course on, uh, on Python that we'll be using. So if you haven't don't have coding experience, but you would like to engage with us in this journey, um, you can essentially just take this small course, which will provide you essentially everything you know you need to know for this specific course. And we're trying to keep it as, as light as possible to not make the Python too much of a requirement for uh, people who would want to take this course. Um, and so today we are uh, releasing the, the second uh, module and um, the first actually graded assignment is going to be due in, in two weeks. So if you'd like to enroll uh, today, it's probably a good day to, to, to start. It's still tons of, a lot of time because it's still there is time to review and watch the videos, to solve the practice problem, and also to take the great assignment that is due in two weeks. Perfect. Yeah. Um, more things, Milena, because these massive open online courses, we know that uh, sometimes we have learners that uh, they enroll, they are very excited at, at the beginning, but sometimes it's good to provide kind of some tips or guidelines to keep them engaged and motivated through the course. So what would you recommend them in order to help them to succeed in this MOOC? Yeah, so I think setting up a, a regular schedule uh, for, for you to work on this is, is definitely good because that way you... You, you make those decisions for yourself ahead of the time. And I think it's it's good to have structure. Um, but the second thing, and maybe the more, most important thing is really to um, to engage with our community. And so uh, there's myself, the other instructor, we have a TA as well, who's there to answer all the questions. And what we're really trying to do is whenever someone has a specific question on uh, on the unit or on an exercise or anything that is unclear and where they need support, we really try to be as responsive as possible and address that right away so it's not a blocker for them to continue on the journey. And so if you have any uh, questions, any doubts, if you um, are maybe struggling with some parts of the course, just let us know. We're really here to help. We really want everyone to succeed. And um, the forum is really there for that. So don't be shy. Uh, reach out to us. We'll, we'd, we'd love to, to help you on, on the journey. Awesome, Milena. And for those of you who already completed the MicroMaster with us or any of the SCX courses, I would say keep up the good work. You already know how to succeed with the MOOCs and you will find here a very similar format. Um, you are very used to that. So just book in your calendar sometime, watch your, the videos, solve the practice problems, do the great assignment and go for it. The content is really, really excited. I had the chance to have a look to the content and, and it's really, really excited to see the problems and the, the real world problems that you are bringing here. Okay, so with that, I think, Milena, we can move into the questions and answers and see the questions from, from our learners and the audience and, and see uh, how we can help with that. So I have one question. We have received one question from Jim, Jim Graham. Uh, Jim is asking about how much is the Python programming going to be involved in grading? Mm -hmm. So um, all of the different uh, graded assignments are essentially going to be um, based on Python exercises that we ask you to do. Now, um, in each of the modules that we have, uh, we essentially first present your concept, present your mathematical model, a Python implementation, and we ask you to go through a series of very short exercises that are essentially made to um, get you comfortable with coding. And so 
Um, what we really want to do is that by the time that you arrive to your graded assignment, if you have completed all of those uh, questions uh, in the module, that this is a very comfortable and very straightforward for you to, to succeed. And so um, we um, we know that a lot of people can, can find Python and coding to be a bit intimidating. Uh, we have that with um, a lot of the students. Uh, we're really trying to, uh, to show you that uh, if you put in some work and if you progress uh, slowly, um, it's something that you can pick up pretty quickly and that can really enhance uh, what you can do uh, in terms of supply chain modeling. So uh, that's that's the question. It's involved in the grading, but don't be don't be too intimidated by it, basically. <laughs> And I think you already uh, answered to the basis a uh, question because uh, it was asking about I'm learning Python for the very first time. Will I face difficulty to solve the problems with this limited knowledge? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, there's definitely a bit of a learning curve. Uh, we're here. We're there to help. Um, also, one thing to note is that. Um, what we want to do is we want to show you a bunch of different code and then we'll ask you things like, hey, you know, modify this code to make some changes. We're not going to ask you to, you know, develop full models from scratch. Um, and so we're really trying to gradually bring you to, to a level that, uh, that you need. And we've done this with our residential students who didn't have any experience in Python and it worked pretty well. And, um, Honestly, by the end of it, everyone was pretty excited about what they were able to do. So I would say, as long as you do all the exercises, uh, you should uh, you should be uh, you should be okay. Um, just keep keep up at it, and if there are any questions you might have, just reach out to us. We will be happy to help you um, as needed. Perfect. Uh, there are some questions related to um, this MOOC in particular and if this is going to give credit for the SCM residential program. So I'm going to read the question and maybe we both of us, we can answer this question. Milena, uh, Kiara uh, uh, is bringing the following. Um, taking this online course, would it count as credit toward the supply chain management residential program? I can take that one. No, this is not going to provide you credits for the SCM residential program. This MOOC is part of our specialized ecosystem of MOOCs that we are offering in addition to the MicroMaster program. So at CTL, we have the MicroMaster program with the five SCX courses. And we also have MOOCs in sustainability, humanitarian logistics, and now this new MOOC in advanced uh, planning system and network design. So we consider this kind of a specialized MOOC that you can take in order to learn and enjoy um, deep dive into some of the uh, techniques in supply chain management to solve network design problems, for example. Um, there is one question also specific about the elective courses on campus. And Milena, you are also teaching this course on campus. So what's the approach with that? Those learners that already took the MOOC, when they come on campus, do they need to take the residential part or not for this specific course? So uh, our blended students are highly encouraged to take this course uh, because that way they essentially get um, to a similar level as the res residential students who are currently taking the course uh, right now. Uh, and um, they're there's essentially going to be a project in January where they're going to work on that and apply the, the concepts of this course. So it's very much a good idea to take it to take the course um, to be able to kind of get up to speed. Now, if you were to take this course, um, um, let's say with this specific run and then come to MIT as a residential student, maybe in a year or two years, um, this is not going to count for your credit. But uh, let's say you have a, a pretty uh, a pretty good uh, head start in terms of uh, what you already know. So if the residential course is probably going to be a, a more straightforward for you to complete. Mm -hmm. OK. There is there are some questions related to scholarships. Are scholarships available for low income income learners? I would say here follow edX. Uh, there are a lot of information in, on edX and financial aid to help learners. So these uh, follow exactly the same as any other massive open online course on edX. So check that um, check check that information. Um, some questions, Milena, related to 
when will be the next rung of this MOOC or if we are not able to finish this course, will it be offered again? So uh, we know this is the very first time uh, we are launching this MOOC. Um, we also need to talk about the, the deadlines when we are planning to, when you are closing this. Um, any plans for 2025? Yeah, I mean, we would we would love to uh, offer this course probably on a yearly basis, um, probably about this time. Uh, I think um, that's uh, that's that's our current plan. Uh, but um, I have to say, Eva, right now we're so focused on getting this first edition right that we haven't been thinking about the next dates yet. But that is our general plan to be able to um, to uh, offer this on a yearly basis. Perfect. Yes. Um. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this sounds great. Um, there are some questions more related to the to the content uh, that I think you, you are going to like this one, Milena. Uh, Botgang, uh, he's uh, bringing, a, can you describe a typical problem with additional factors? Because you mentioned revenue, inventory, cost, sustainability. Um, how can you provide more details about how a problem like this uh, can be and the potential solution? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, uh, I love to talk about network design, so I'd love to no, give you some examples. Um, so I'll give you maybe um, three problems that we're actually going to be looking into this course and that come directly from, from the research work that we've done with, with companies. Um, so... The first problem is, let's say you have a, a company that is supplying goods from, you know, uh, outside. The demand is located in the U.S. and you have the suppliers that are located all across the world. And so we've actually worked with companies that are in the shipping industry. And um, they mentioned that their clients, essentially, when they're making decisions on how to ship these goods, they typically only tend to focus on transportation cost. And so what we did with them is we actually elaborated models that allow you to consider a much more comprehensive number of elements, such as, you know, what is your inventory in transit? What is the impact of the different design choices you make on your safety stock? Um, what are the purchase prices from the different suppliers, et cetera? And so what we're trying to do is essentially expand the scope of the considerations that are typically taken and have more comprehensive models that allow you to essentially find um, the best solution, not only focused on one specific element, but on a wide uh, number of topics that uh, may be um, relevant. Uh, so that's one example. Another example is um, we worked with companies that um, essentially came to us and said, okay, we we are designing our network of warehouses in a given market, and we've noticed that um, the uh, higher the service level, the cl closer we are to the customer, the more demand and market share we can capture. And so what we did with them is essentially develop models where we're not only saying, how do I serve my current demand and minimize the cost, but how do I now build models where I can essentially maximize for the profit? And so I'm essentially using my network design to drive demand and drive revenue rather than just um, fulfilling given demand um, at, at, at the lowest cost. And so that's a very new way of thinking about design that uh, is actually pretty exciting because it, it really uh, gives a much more crucial role to supply chain network design in, in the companies. Um, and then I think the third example is simply, you know, when you are making all of these design choices, um, you're often faced with um, uh, trade-offs that exist between, you know, the cost, the lead time and sustainability. And so what we're trying to bring in is a way to systematically consider those and essentially, um, depending on how you prioritize those different elements in your decision, well, you essentially get different types of models and different types of designs. And so we're we're trying to bring a structured way to incorporate these multiple objectives into, into your decision. And so, you know, should I use rail versus road, for example, as a mode of transportation? Well, that that should uh, that will have implications on all of these um, different dimensions. So that's just a snapshot of the type of um, um, things that we'll be looking at. Perfect. Uh, there are some questions also related to the modules. Um, what are the key concepts or the key things uh, they will learn in each of the mod modules? So you already mentioned that the first week was the intro to supply chain design. So can you um, provide more details about what to expect in module two, three, and four? And 
Yes. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Yeah. So so the, the first module is in intro plus intro to Python. And so, so that gives you kind of a bit of time to, to get up to speed uh, with some of the key concepts if needed. The second module, uh, we are essentially reviewing the foundational network design models. And so we're starting with very simple things like transportation and transshipment. But then we are also incorporating additional elements such as uh, what if you consider multimodal transportation and what if you now don't just connect your points in a network with a straight line, but look at the real distances. And so we're, we're taking the foundational models, but we are um, essentially making them more realistic and more adapted to, to real life settings. Um, and that's where that overlap uh, with SC2X is gonna be um, um, happening. Uh, same type of models, but we, we extend on, on, on how we implement them and how we essentially define some of those um, um, uh, parameters. Then the third model is going to be looking at uh, how do we take these uh, foundational models and essentially extend them? And we'll extend them in two ways. Um, on one hand, we'll consider more general network structures. So let's say you don't only, only have two tiers or three tiers of facilities, but basically we'll show you how to model any type of network with any number um, of uh, tiers of facilities that you might have. And then on the other hand, we'll say, okay, how do we incorporate revenue into a uh, network design model? So how do we move from simply minimizing for cost towards using your design to drive revenue, to drive profit, uh, to drive demand? Um, and um, the third module is really gonna help you kind of get comfortable with the different modeling paradigms that we're using. And then we're uh, gonna be diving into uh, two specific elements. So the model, module four, is focused on inventory. And so we look at basically uh, different design decisions, their impact on inventory and how to incorporate those um, uh, uh, those aspects into your network design models. And then the fourth one is going to be um, how do we incorporate multiple objectives into our uh, supply chain uh, design models. So yeah, very excited. Uh, uh, and we'd love to hear, uh, hear uh, from the learners what they think about the content and what are some of the, the areas they're, they're interested in. Yeah, always great to receive their feedback. Um, yes, and also to use the discussion forum. Uh, they have the discussion forum in order to bring their questions about related to content. So they can also uh, bring their experience there and ask their questions and participate. And we truly encourage them to interact through the platform, through the with their peers and the, 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 the course team at the same time, for sure. There is one question uh, from Kiara. Um, saying since even, even more courses from the residential and blended programs are being offered online, online, are there any plans in the future to offer the entire master's program online? Okay, I, I can take this one. So uh, Kiara, our, our, um, often here we have, as you know, the MicroMaster program and the MicroMaster is a pathway to apply to a master's degree at MIT to the Master uh, in Supply Chain Management at MIT. And the, uh, the way we design this entire journey is the first part, MicroMaster 100% online, the second part, 100% in-person. So to earn a master's degree at MIT, what we are planning to do now and in the future, or at least in the, in the, in the long, medium term, is continue with this approach. Uh, first part online with the MicroMaster, and this is a pathway to a master degree at MIT and many other universities, more than 20 uh, universities uh, across the world. Um, these MOOCs are a specialized MOOC. This is a great way for you to deep dive into uh, concepts and topics that you, you want to learn more in this field. So from the learning perspective, in order to learn and apply what you learn to these real world examples, these are great tools for you to learn more about advanced uh, planning system and network design tools. Um, is this a part of a, a offering an online master degree at MIT? No, this is not part of that idea. It's just to offer more specialized content in supply chain management to the world, to democratize the knowledge and to bring this knowledge to anyone from anywhere. So that's the idea behind these MOOCs. 
and I hope this clarifies. There is another question about how this relates to the GC Log program. Same thing. This is a MOOC uh, just to democratize knowledge and um, learn more about these relevant topics that Milena is presenting to us. Okay, I think with that, I want to thank you all for taking the time to join us today and learn more about advanced supply chain systems planning and network design. We hope you will enroll and verify the course to start expanding your knowledge in this relevant topic to build on your existing uh, knowledge or, or just to, to come to us for the very first time. Um, Milena, I'll hand it over to you to close us out. Yeah, well, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to to talk about this course and to connect with the learners. Um, I am very excited to see that there is quite, quite some enthusiasm about this course, and I hope that you will all enjoy it. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to enroll, um, I, I believe you'll be provided with the, the links and um, uh, we... we uh, you still have uh, quite quite enough time, but don't wait too long. Uh, so uh, probably, if you if you'd like to to, to enroll in this course, uh, now is is the best time. And uh, I, I I hope you'll join us in this journey. And thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.